guests and Eric Julien. All of them are here, so they are going to come on to the set. Harun Krishnamurti is also with us, as well as Gauthier Keru. Harun, you said you met now. Let's have a chance. Harun? Let's have a chance. Oui, mettez-vous là, Gauthier. Et on va installer nos amis indiens. And our Kogi friends are going to sit here. Pablo Santos, Jose Gabriel, and Eric Julien will sit down here. Pablo Santos is the governor, the Kogi Indian from Colombia. And Jose Gabriel represent the spiritual authorities. Eric Julien, hello, and thank you. You will be the translator, but you also are the associate funding of Jean Dunois from here and there, an association that defends the Kogi Indians. Maybe you can briefly. Uh, present the living condition, the, the Kogi Kuz, and then we'll give the floor to one of our Merci. guests. Merci à vous. Thank you. Merci Thank you to présent. all. Thank you for en being uh, with us. Kogi, the Kogi Indians, we have two representatives of them here, live at the far north of Colombia on the South American continent, at the, at the extreme north of Colombia. There's a mountain, which is the highest mountain in the world, close to the sea, 5,800 kilometers high, less than 40 kilometers from the Caribbean Sea, we said, it uh, looks for a biodiversity spot, found this mountain is the second biodiversity spot in the world. And this mountain, this is where our friend lived. They are supposed to be the last pre-Columbian society that's still uh, working, that's still alive. That would make it uh, 4,000 not interrupted, uninterrupted uh, uh, years of, uh, of uh, history. And it is a civilization. They have their own language. They have uh, the vision of the word, cosmogonia. They have the uh, legal system, uh, an educational system. They have a their specific relationship with uh, the earth and in a um, um, uh, round table where we talk about repairing the earth. I'm, I'm really happy that you asked them to come and uh, contribute their way to see the word which we do not uh, very often pause to listen to. We've been working with them for over 20 years to try and buy back land and, and, and give them back their land because for them, the earth is what uh, uh, enables to have the rules to live together. We've bought back 2,000 hectares, which we have given back to them. And with their knowledge, they have regenerated the, um, the, the forest. And it's so rare to have good news that uh, when you have some good news, even when they're small, it's really uh, beautiful to be able to share them. And the other thing we are doing with them is that we are uh, uh, opening up the dialogue, thinking that we, the civilized people, are not going to find the solution on our own. We need to talk to each other. And we set a 6.5 meters uh, um, boat uh, called Zigonoshi, uh, that means dialogue, that uh, uh, arrived to the Caribbean. There were uh, 18 objects made of gold that had been uh, robbed by the conquistadors. And this money was given, uh, this, uh, these objects were given back to them. It was the first time that the gold stolen there came back to the Americas to regain its spiritual dimension. Maybe the time has come also to listen to spiritual voices. Thank you for welcoming them. Hello, Eric. So, Eric, as you were saying, we are here to talk about repairing the earth, which is quite a, a task. Of course, uh, there's a depletion of resources. The, there's a climatic change at work. We know it's a very concrete reality. But uh, there might be things we can do against us here. And maybe you are, uh, Pablo Santos and Jose Gabriel are here as uh, 
whistleblowers. I'm going to let you dialogue with uh, Pablo Santos, who speaks uh, Spanish. Um, probably uh, some of them will understand uh, him, and uh, Eric Julien will translate. Thank you very much. If some of you speak Spanish better than I do when they hear things and, 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 and consider I'm, I'm missing part of the, it, please correct me. We are together in this. Sometimes I'm, I, I, there are things I don't understand or I miss. Maybe we can tell Jose Gabriel what we are asking from them. Jose Santos, pardon, Saona. Santos Saona is the uh, governor of the Cogis. He's their representative, their political representative. He uh, can negotiate. He is uh, like a, a locally elected official. He would be the president of, of the of the department. He cares for the um, political dimension. While his uh, uh, um, friend is uh, a mama. The mama spend uh, 18 years training in the dark. He's more, he represents more the, the, uh, uh, the spiritual uh, authority. Hello. I'm sorry because he spoke his language and I have absolutely no clue what he says. I was just telling you, hello, I've come from the Sierra Nevada Santa Marta, north of Colombia. We come from the Kogi community. We the, are four groups, uh, ethnic groups in the Sierra Nevada with different languages. Also, different cultures. We are the spiritual authorities, our ancestors have um, instructed us to convey a uh, message to this uh, planet. I'm Jose de los Santos, Sauna. I'm the leader of the, the political leader of the Kogi community. I'd like you to thank you, uh, people from the country of France, to have accepted me in this very uh, special event and for listening to my words. We feel sometimes invisible in this world because we are minorities. In Colombia, there are 86 different uh, ethnic groups and, and uh, 65 different languages, and we are one of these uh, uh, 86 ethnic groups. Our mission was entrusted us by Sedanqua, and it is to uh, uh, take care uh, of the uh, nature. Yesterday, he would say in the conference that we only have one God, but we it has, he has uh, different names, and we call him uh, Sedanqua. And our mission is just to try and protect life, to protect the earth, and protect the life we depend on. 
Uh, we have been very worried by the situation in the Sierra Santa Madre. Because uh, the earth has started to produce very obvious uh, alarms about what you call the uh, climatic change. And And we have a, a law, the law of origins, which is a bit like your constitution. This, this is the law of nature we refer to in order to act. And we also know the laws and the constitutions that you establish for each country among humans. What we see is that uh, your constitutions do not take into account life and uh, nature. This is uh, one of the things they, they uh, are thinking about. How could we get the people's constitution you have in your countries and the constitution of nature with which we need to uh, get back on the path of dialogue? Yes, I wanted to ask Pablo Santos how many uh, Indian Co uh, Kogi Indians there are today? How do you live? Do you still live as your ancestors did, or are you, uh, is your way of life disrupted by uh, uh, modern life? We are 5,000 families, about 22,000 uh, people. Since uh, the conquest, we've suffered uh, territorial, material, and spiritual uh, harm. We've uh, gone through all types of, of shocks, and thanks to the spiritual material constitution of Serranca, we have managed to survive and to uh, still be around uh, today. And we've kept our culture. We've suffered several negative impacts uh, in the Sierra and the mountain. First of all, the conquest, the theft of our land, now all the uh, armed uh, paramilitary group, FARC, although there seems to be uh, uh, an agreement about what we found, and all the marijuana and cocaine uh, episodes that uh, had as a consequence the disappearance of 60% uh, of the tropical forest, and our own government has uh, uh, treated us uh, uh, badly. The, this uh, policy to develop mining, uh, uh, roads, uh, tourism, it doesn't help. Every day they want to change our language, they want to, they want to change our uh, uh, culture, our spirituality. We have connections with the earth, with the water, with the air, with food, with the, the elements, with the sea. It's our mission to uh, remain in touch with these elements of life. 
This is why every day we claim, we shout in, in front of, of, of uh, nature uh, to uh, get everybody to take care of nature. Hence the word digoneshi, digoneshi. We have to see how we help nature so that nature can help us. Ce serait de voir comment on peut essayer d'aider un peu la nature pour qu'en échange la nature continue à nous aider et qu'ensemble avec la nature. So that together with nature we can guarantee a better future for our children. We need to reopen this dialogue. What can we do to help nature so that nature can help us? Do you think nature is uh, uh, is uh, ill or we are ill? Nature is sick, has been uh, crying, and nobody listens to it. These shamans uh, say that nature is sick, it's uh, uh, shouting, and there's nobody here to listen to the earth. Hence our visit when we got here in France not long ago, we have seen this uh, materialism. We've seen uh, um, big uh, boats, uh, huge cities, uh, huge uh, buildings, but not much spirituality. We've seen that uh, women, children, men are disconnected from the earth, the, the sea spiritual. We haven't seen many people who think the earth, the air, who think in at least a, a bit in nature. Many people are uh, busy with material things. I think nature has no price. It's priceless. We need to change the, uh, uh, our conscience. We need to change ourselves. We need to learn how to live together with uh, nature and uh, uh, find this uh, spiritual agreement again with nature. Thank you. And there was a question to Gauthier late, earlier on about the investments you promote and the way they can uh, help these types of culture to survive and to uh, continue. Maybe something very brief about our, uh, from our shaman friend. Yeah, this is very complicated because you ask him a question, it can last for three hours, but you can try. Cortica, chiquitica, porque no hay mucho tiempo, pero que podría exprimir. Cada vez, bueno, intentamos. Chao. Let's try it. José Gabriel. José Gabriel. Primero voy a saludar mi lengua. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, say hello to you in my language so that uh, you're sure I'm uh, an Indian. I'm saying that uh, my little brother and I came to say hello. We want to learn more and I want to teach more. I live in the Sierra de Santa Marta, Colombian area. I want to go and learn from you. I learn a lot, and maybe in this exchange you will also learn something from me. As the governor told you, there are four Indian groups living in this uh, mountain. Cancuamo, 
en el río allá, cuando al principio que no estaba, tú, todavía estaba Serancua, acá habla Dios, nosotros decimos Serancua, Madre Senecán se nos dejó allá nosotros cuidar. Sí, habemos mucho, hijo de Dios, habemos mucho, bastante, no hay que contar, pero se nos dejó, serán con nosotros que cuidaran corazón de mundo. Serán cuando vio que ese tiempo lo vio que se va a dañar, nosotros los cuatro nos vamos a dañar, por eso que nosotros usamos poporo, lo que tenemos, para cuidar corazón de mundo, para que no se acabe. Cuando uno se muere, ya no hay nada. Así mismo, se acaban allá en la Sierra Nevada, esto vemos grande, son grandes, al territorio son grandes, Francia, mucho grande, pero para Serancua son chiquiticos. Ha nacido allá, por eso nosotros estamos cuidando allá. 86, 86 etnia indígena nos dejó también. Déjame traducir un poco, porque voy a morir. Uh, let me translate because I'm going to die. You've been speaking for too long. I need to just start translating. I hope the Spanish speakers in the room are, uh, are very much uh, listening to me and will tell me if I'm wrong. And I'm also in a, uh, allow myself to interpret it to say for him and the life was born on the territory and they've told you they have a spiritual vision of things for them spirituality is before matter and when they say life was born there one conscience of thing a conscious of thing in this mountain as maybe in other tradition was born there and we've heard that both gods the feminine and masculine both polarities that you find in other tradition yin and yang the conscience of this polarity that uh, gave rise to life for them. It's the conscience of things that is before form, so they feel responsible of this conscience. They call it the, the big brothers, and, and we, they call small brothers. There are many of them, and they don't necessarily have a conscience. So we have the responsibility in this mountain to protect the origin of life and not the uh, incarnate form we represent. And I said several times, heart of the world. This is the last idea in uh, his uh, speech for them. Each human group has a responsibility on the place where it lives. And he's asking us, uh, uh, what do we do with our responsibility? And the cosmogonia and their vision of the world, they look after the heart, the heart being the places that sense energy, that uh, emits energy. And there's something I didn't say, but uh, I need to add. If we take this mountain from a, a strictly geographic point of view, um, almost 6,000 uh, 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 meter high in the, close to the Caribbean with the, uh, the specific winds, uh, with the, it's a place where uh, cyclones, uh, uh, hurricanes are born, they concentrate a number of problems, the melting of, uh, of the snow, and, and this is a place that will be strongly upset by the climate change. And they, they say all our shamans, all our uh, priests have told us for ages that we are going to have problems, and with our knowledge today, uh, uh, that uh, uh, things are uh, beginning to uh, uh, move in this direction. Now I'd like to listen to Gauthier uh, Keru, who will tell us about the Mirova Bank, which supports uh, projects in favor of uh, sustainable development and have as its uh, uh, mantra that uh, the, uh, uh, losing resources is not a fatality, it's not a, uh, something we cannot avoid. Merci. Bonjour à tous. 
Good. Hello, everybody. It's hard to speak after such uh, lovely statements. My name is Gauthier Keru. I work for Morova, which is a management company based in Paris. We come under the Banque Populaire Caisse d'Epargne. We do socially, we deal with socially responsible saving. I want to talk to you today about my experience of a partnership with the UN Convention to Combat Desertification and the Mm, and deterioration of land. Thanks to this experience, I learned a lot about uh, uh, the uh, deterioration of land. Initiatives exist. Uh, uh, there are innovations and solutions to deal with this situation. And finance can make a contribution in order to promote these solutions. Just a few words very quickly to remind you about the problem of uh, land degradation. It's currently estimated that over the last 20 years, we've lost 25% uh, of arable land, 2 billion hectares, that is the surface of China, uh, are degraded every year because of human activity. We deteriorate 12 million hectares of land, that is half uh, the surface of the UK. That uh, to uh, show you the importance of this phenomenon around the world. And this is linked to a whole series of uh, activities which uh, everyone around the world uh, uh, fosters through direct or indirect action, like deforestation, unsuitable farming practices that focus on the short term, overgrazing, which is a real issue too, galloping urbanization. And this has been amplified by climate change. It's a very negative trend. We overconsume and underinvest in consumption in production. There are any number of consequences in a world where the population will grow and amount to about nine billion uh, soon. Food security is threatened by land degradation. That's an essential point. But it's not just a question of food security, it's also a question of climate change, because soil uh, captures carbon and releases carbon. Ecosystems need to be resilient to adapt to the ongoing climate change. This degradation limits their resilience. The same applies to biodiversity, land degradation and desertification need to uh, the disappearance of many species. That's the environmental dimension. I talked about uh, food security, but also there's poverty. Land degradation leads to a, a drop in income, growing poverty amongst farmers in many countries, not just the developing ones. And as a result, this leads to great political instability, political instability and even conflicts, 40% of interstate conflicts over the past 10 years are linked to uh, natural resources. And there's another very topical issue. Land degradation has a direct impact on migration and migratory flows. You need to stabilize the populations. The population needs to have local means of subsistence, and land degradation threatens all that. Just a little aside. We're not going to focus on the migratory crisis, but we lie at the heart of this discussion in Europe and have uh, been for about the last year. People talk about one million refugees, climate change, triggers mass movements of thousands of people every year, climate change and its economic consequences for these people. And this has led to the migration of 200 million people over the last few years. So the numbers are huge and much greater than the current problem for Europe. Indeed, it's a pretty gloomy picture. But we're here at the Positive Economy Forum, so there are solutions. And these solutions begin above all by a growth in awareness of land degradation to start with, uh, this loss of productivity and the ability of soil to produce and play a part in ecosystems. 
And degradation has been on the agenda of major international conferences over the past few years. The, the Rio Plus 20 uh, Summit were in 2012. Uh, this was highlighted. And a concept emerged called land degradation neutrality in English. That's a, a collective goal to achieve land degradation neutrality. In other words, to aim at a state where each uh, um, group uh, in the world achieves economic de development that no longer degrades the land. In other words, uh, uh, economic growth is no longer linked to land degradation. It's a new concept which has been enshrined in sustainable development goals. If you look at the 17 objectives and the 160 underlying goals, it's a goal 15.3. By 2030, we need to attain land degradation neutrality. To phrase this differently, it's like WWF says, it's a question of reducing our ecological debt. Every day and earlier and earlier in the year, we say we've uh, consumed everything on the planet. We're starting on a second planet. The goal of land degradation neutrality is that by the end of the year, we've uh, used only uh, the resources of a single planet, not several. We need to restore degraded land and develop activities that uh, respect ecosystems and enable ecosystems to regenerate. We need to preserve certain areas and create sustainable development models. That's the challenge. And the second good news over and beyond the collective growth and awareness, and the concept is a great source of inspiration. It's meaningful for people. People can understand uh, this quite complex uh, situation. There are operational solutions, particularly when it comes to land use. People talk about sustainable farming, sustainable forestry, and we hear a lot now about agroecology, agroforestry, which comprises planting forests and trees. Uh, with uh, uh, farming activity too, there is improved uh, grazing, overgrazing uh, leads to deforestation in Brazil, for example. There are any number of innovations like uh, drip irrigation. You can improve soil fertility even in arid areas. And then there are startups and innovative entrepreneurs who are creating systems. You can plant in uh, trees in desert areas and farm using biodegradable uh, systems so the roots uh, can go deeper into the soil and uh, uh, suck up uh, underground water. There are all sorts of uh, new approaches to uh, projects, agriculture like forests and in other areas have been uh, uh, compartmentalized, uh, but now there's a new generation of players uh, in uh, local and regional areas. There are people who have a landscape approach now. People talk about a mosaic approach. In other words, these people take account of the complexity of land and the services rendered by ecosystems. You promote a project to, to plant uh, something. It shouldn't be a single crop. You need to factor in the so-called regulatory functions of a crop, biodiversity, the water cycle. You need to have conservation areas where you can protect species and uh, uh, valuable know-how. The idea is to have a more sophisticated vision when implementing a project. And there's further good news. And that will lead me to the uh, part banks can play. All this can create value for uh, communities and enable communities to access financing, because that's what's involved. Through techniques and know-how, one can improve productivity. That improves uh, the income of farmers. There are technological innovations that I uh, talked about earlier on. Also, that's linked to our uh, consumption patterns. We Westerners, but this is becoming more and more widespread, we have uh, certified products now. There are more and more labels. When you buy coffee, uh, you see a lot of fair trade labels, there are different environmental labels. That also creates value at the end and at the beginning of the cycle for the producers. And then there are innovative mechanisms, which we call payments for ecosystem services. In other words, recognize that nature has a value. In economic terms, this uh, 
uh, in, as a means of including positive externalities. In certain countries, beverage companies need uh, water resources, and they are uh, helping to plant trees on the riverbanks. This uh, makes it uh, uh, easier to maintain a good water cycle. Now, maybe I should say a few words now about the bank. Obviously, you need to share knowledge, you need to share te transfer technology, you need to have proper governance. The international community, regional and national community have to create a, a, a conducive framework. You, a lot of financing is needed, too. Whence Morova's initiative with the UN, the projects I mentioned are mainly financed currently through development aid and state funding, but to attain the goal of land degradation neutrality by 2030, to implement a sustainable management policy, we need much more money. So the idea of a public-private fund emerged. Morovo was selected by the UN to set it up. The project we are currently implementing is an investment fund which will provide access to funding for all these projects in terms of sustainable forestry management, land management. We have developed a dedicated team which will be able to analyze these projects with a view to financing them in an effective way. These resources will come from uh, public and private capital. People are keen to uh, finance the real economy. There's strong demand. The idea is to create a sort of channel between the offer of capital and this demand in the field. The role of financial institutions is to create this link, develop a connection between supply and demand, and in the end, uh, revert to our main role, which is to finance the real economy with a view to sustainable development. And I think this is possible. I think there are three preconditions which can make it possible to attain these goals. First of all, for a financial institution and for people involved involved in land restoration, you need the expertise. We're talking about sustainable development, complicated issues with many different facets. We need know-how, in-house know-how. We need a whole team to work on sustainable development. Just one person cannot possibly master all the areas involved. You have to interact with research, the academic world, which also has an essential role to play to turn ideas into things that are really uh, practical and are a real opportunity. You need to have a collaborative approach. You need a PP partnerships. Public side has to provide visibility and enable the private sector to become more mobilized. And the private sector must better understand state policies in order to provide support. That entails dialogue, conferences like this one, working groups, and so on. And you need transparency and traceability. If you want to trust the private sector, it has to be accountable. It has to be able to explain how its activity has an impact. Subject to these conditions, I think we can hope to find solutions which will contribute to attain uh, the goals I mentioned. Thank you. You talked to us about investment, the role of banks and uh, uh, PPPs uh, and local government. A player who's very important is missing, the people. The people who are already suffering from the consequences of global warming, overgrazing, large-scale uh, single crops, uh, as the Kogi Indians uh, said, uh, the impact is huge on isolated populations. There are people who are getting ever more poor, and they are often very aware of the pro problem. But the people for whom these biofuels are being uh, grown, people uh, who indulge in uh, single cropping, over grazing. These are 
um, it's the middle classes in uh, the developed and developing world that benefit from all these practices, but they need to be aware of the damage being wrought. Otherwise, there's going to be no change in uh, the overall uh, global trading system if there isn't a growth in awareness. Uh, well, these are populations are the real, these group of people are, is the real predator. When I talked about land degradation, the impact is growing uh, vulnerability, more and more poor people. So we need to find suitable solutions. We talk about responsible financing. The idea is to find solutions to ensure that capital is channeled not towards the kind of activities you were saying, that is a single cropping. Uh, this has a, uh, a link with expropriation. We need to be able to exclude these harmful activities from this form of financing and promote activities which have a very positive impact and provide solutions. That is why today uh, I'm pleased to be at the Positive Economy Forum. The idea is to uh, achieve cross-fertilization, and it's wonderful to be able to uh, talk together to find solutions. We need to innovate, and I think it's by uh, showing that there are solutions that work that will be able to uh, bring around mainstream financing. Arun Krishna Murthy, Environmentalist Foundation of India. This is a foundation you set up. Tell us more about your life. Uh, what choice did you make? Les choix que vous avez fait, votre parcours. Tell us about your career. Arun began by working with a big international group. Your, your matters in life and uh, de, de create this foundation. Tell us about you. Hi. Namaste, good afternoon. My name is Arun Krishnamurthy and I run the Environmentalist Foundation of India. We call ourselves EFI. We are nothing but community volunteers who have taken on the challenge of cleaning our own environment. Uh, when I was invited here to speak, they said you have to speak on repairing the planet. But I sincerely believe that we need to repair humanity and not the planet. I'll tell you why. Because uh, we need this planet more than the planet needing us. If we need to continue to walk on the face of this planet, we need to do something about it. We cannot let gender, religion, caste, creed, color, language, and regions dominate our lives when we have bigger challenges ahead of us. Climate change, global warming has become subjects of a few conservationists, but not of the common public. These are questions that really worry me. Uh, they, I'm 29, I turned 30 in two months, and when I think about my future, I'm genuinely worried, because the place I come from, 20 years ago, it wasn't the same. Uh, eight months ago, we had massive floods. Uh, the official record state 700 odd people died. But uh, in two months from now, we're going to have rains again. And uh, the earth is changing, the climate is changing, and we have massive rainfalls these days. Probably we are the one city in the world where we had drought for eight months, floods for two months, and then drought again in the next two months. Why is all this happening? Where is my future? When I think of all this, uh, I think of one thing. We, we, we've lost the human in every being. We're no longer human beings. We just consume us. You don't know where your t-shirt came from. It comes from one of the factories near my home. Uh, you, I don't know where the bottled water came from. It comes from one of the other countries, which are the so-called developing economies. As long as we're just consumers who can only take in and not give back, we're never going to understand how to repair this planet. Because I'll tell you this, ranging from water to air, we have degraded and we are degrading every natural resource at a rate at which we don't even understand. And the impacts of which is actually felt on many uh, population across the world which is being undermined. And still we today talk about a global strategy on development. I don't understand what development is. How can we let the rich get richer and the poor get poorer and how are we going to bridge these gaps? Then the final topic about wildlife. We, mine is a country 
country which is blessed with abundant ecology and uh, wild animals. These animals are dying faster than ever before. We've seen more elephants die this year than ever before. Our tigers are getting poached for medicinal purposes. So when you look at repairing the planet, there's not one thing that we have to repair. There are so many things that we need to think about. And it cannot be done by a select few of us. It has to be done by all of us. This hall today has so many of you listening to on how we're going to repair the planet. When we step out of these doors, how many of us will be ready to take on the challenge of repairing the planet is a larger question. Because we can... <laughs> yes, that's also the problem because we're speaking repairing the planet in two different languages and we don't know how we're going to communicate it. When you think of this, the larger issue is out of these doors, beyond these conferences, beyond these drawing boards, what is getting executed on ground? Does any of this talking translate into real work? Year after year after year, we have conferences where people sit together and talk about we need to save the polar bears, we need to save the tigers, we need to repair this planet, but is it really happening? Are we taking part in it? And I really hope we all come together in this Positive Economy Forum to design a strategy on how we can work together beyond our regional language and gender barriers and look at one world where all life forms can live in harmony. Because that, in true sense, is repairing the planet. Because repairing humanity is the first step that we need to do. We need to break the barriers amongst ourselves. And only then, I think, we strongly believe that we would be able to achieve of repairing this planet. Thank you, everyone. And tell us about this action. Parlez-nous de cette action que vous avez lancée. Tell us about this action you have launched. Uh, tidy lakes, because you think it's important uh, for people who uh, have bath in these lakes or in those lakes or people who drink uh, those lakes water uh, to have it cleared. Do, do uh, avec son, son association, uh, Arun a lancé une initiative au départ entre copains qui était de uh, nettoyer des lacs. You've talked about cleaning lakes as well, so that people who use the lakes to swim or to drink uh, the water can continue to do so. And now you tidied uh, hundreds of lakes. Ils ont nettoyé, curé, une centaine de lacs. Tell, tell us about this. Uh, what's happening in uh, economies like mine is simple as this. Natural resource there is being tapped into so that the global audience can enjoy it. No denying it. We also get international products which we enjoy without knowing where it's coming from. So lakes and ponds in my city, for example, Chennai, we, we're a blessed city, I must tell you. I really wish I can take all of you there because we have roughly around 300. Yes, we should go. Probably the next uh, positive economy should happen there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we have roughly around 300 people. Plus lakes, uh, three rivers, and a large marshland. But what happened over the years is we're talking about refugees, we're talking about uh, migration. There is a huge climate change migration that's happening within my country. People who are moving away from their traditional farmlands because of a failed crop, and they're coming into large cities. Cities like mine are not able to take the, uh, I shouldn't call it a burden, are not able to take it the pressure of uh, increasing population. When that happens, lakes and ponds, uh, which are critical water habitats become the first point of pollution. Uh, people build on dry lakes. We have lake view structures on the lake without the lake to be viewed anymore. So when that happens uh, during the monsoons, these lakes, get uh, these lakes get flooded and they in return affect a large community. So we are trying to revive these lakes, not just for human beings, but for all life forms, because there's a amphibetic life, there's, there's uh, going to be fish in that lake, there are going to be frogs, snakes, birds, different kinds of life forms. So what we are trying to do is, if you all were in Chennai, you would be volunteering with us in cleaning these lakes and ponds. Because we want to maintain them as ecological habitats where all life forms can thrive. Because when the water body is fresh, you also ensure there's no spread of diseases. Also what you do is you ensure temperature regulation. Localized climate gets affected because of that. So there's so many advantages in keeping a lake, a pond and a river clean. Uh, economical, ecological and it also helps us prevent disasters. And that's what we've been trying to do. A total of 127 different water bodies across the country in India where we work. And uh, we have a few partners.
because in Sri Lanka and Nepal, we're trying to do the same. And all that we're trying to achieve is uh, we're not in this to make money. We're in this to ensure that the larger community understands that we need to come together for real-time, result-oriented environment conservation on the ground. Thank you, Aaron. Justement, Gauthier Guerreux, est-ce que ce genre de projet uh, entre dans les... Does this kind of a project, is this kind of a project the kind of thing you're liable to support? I'm very pleased to, to have met Arun. We swapped uh, business cards a few minutes ago. Yes, that's one of the benefits of the Positive Economy Forum. What strikes me today is that there are a large number of uh, young entrepreneurs who are really outstanding, like our Arun, who have uh, great qualifications and experience. Uh, and they're creating new businesses they, uh, that are really meaningful. The land, uh, restoring ecosystems, lakes, ponds. We see a lot of young companies in this area. I believe strongly in youth. That's a key factor in the development of the world. And we want to finance these young companies uh, set up uh, by young people around the world. They deserve support, and that's what we try to give priority to. Eric, I'd like to turn to you again. You provided a, a French-Spanish translation earlier on for Pablo Santos and Jose Gabriel. Who would like to take the floor to follow up what we've been talking about? May I specify that there was a great shaman in Europe called Einstein, and he said it's not with the, the modes of thinking that created problems that will be able to solve these same problems and imbalances. It will no doubt be necessary to change our way of thinking. And that is uh, important. We shouldn't do more of the same things. We should change things. It's a, we need a new approach. We were invited with the Kogi to the Quai d'Orsay. Uh, that's the uh, entity which welcomes foreign delegations in France. The Kogi were received by a member of the minister's cabinet in a, a reception room with a red carpet, the Republican guard, uh, lots of uh, gilt uh, and candelabras. And uh, the meeting was a non-meeting because uh, people were saying sort of, wow, oh, you're experiencing a genocide. We can't do anything for you. We uh, emerged from the meeting. I was saying goodbye to people. One of the Kogi who was with me went off into a corridor. There was a lot of gilding. And he picked up a beautiful cushion, put it on his back, and, and started uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, moving towards the exit. The Republican guards thought, what on earth am I uh, going to do? People are carrying away our furniture. And the Kogi started to look towards the door. Where is the guy going to go with this uh, um, cushion on his back? Why am I saying this? Because in the information that we think about, people are saying, well, the situation isn't great, but the, 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 the Kogi are experiencing a genocide. But they can stand back, and they have a great sense of humor. They're not sort of uh, swamped by all this uh, kind of a situation. I think it's wonderful. They manage uh, to uh, um, look at things with a lot of poetry and humor. La señora te pregunta qué quieres apuntar más. Tal vez lo que me dijiste de cómo proteger las grúas que no están todavía malas o lo que dijiste también antes, como quieres. Gracias por la palabra. Well, thank you very much for giving me the floor again. De verdad, quite frankly, hay muchos sitios en la planeta. There are lots of places on Earth which are, are in a very good uh, state. We, there are some disastrous states, but uh, there are places which haven't yet been damaged, which haven't yet been totally polluted. Therefore, I believe that what is really important here 
is three things as follows. First of all, we need to work to sustain nature and human life. Our ancestors gave us a clear message. When you fail to respect nature, nature, with its silent weapons, will start to react, and this will have an impact on humanity. And these are things that we really won't be able to control. In fact, uh, this will uh, just uh, uh, start to, to exert more and more pressure. Nature, rather than being inert, it will start to exert a lot of pressure in turn. I think that, in fact, uh, we could try and do things that are a little bit more practical. I think uh, there have been a lot of technical and scientific studies that are being carried out, but things continue to deteriorate more and more. Things uh, go from bad to worse. So our ancestors uh, told us that we need to protect uh, uh, the rivers and uh, the uh, sea in practice. That's why we say that in the mountains, the various lagoons, there are wetlands, which we need to leave in their pristine state so that the fauna and the flora can uh, likewise remain pristine. People say you should stop uh, mines, you should stop ports, you should stop roads. Uh, we should uh, ensure that these places that are intact don't end up being polluted. In Colombia, the indigenous peoples always talk about taking care of uh, uh, nature, protecting, conserving nature. But uh, in fact, uh, businessmen and companies don't listen to what uh, the indigenous people say. Economic development leads to increasing exploitation. And we believe that this is one of uh, the problems that the other side doesn't fully understand. How we can we get them to uh, uh, grow more aware? Our ancestral law is rooted in nature. Nature, the wind, the um, air, that's what impacts us. We are small, but we have lived, perhaps, uh, we have 25,000 people, but we've always lived in harmony with nature, without electricity and technology. And we have lived that way for years and years. So now, with all the evolution, all these new developments, uh, every day that goes by uh, threatens us uh, with disappearance. We don't have, uh, we don't want roads, we don't want electricity. We live uh, in our mountains and the Sierra Nevadas, we say, is the heart of the world. And if you stop, uh, uh, if the heart stops, then everything else uh, stops as well. And we're going to continue to uh, preserve nature. This is part of our mission in terms of, of uh, protecting this uh, little area we have in both spiritual and material terms. Thank you very much. Merci à tous les saints.
Thank you to the four, five of you. We have five minutes left. We started off late. I am now going to give the floor to José Gabriel should he want to conclude, but he will only have five minutes. Are you ready? Okay. No, we want to live a healthy life for more years. It would be good if we could live on for 80,000 years and life was created so that we can live on for a very long time. We were not created to disappear. And it's not only about the Indians in the uh, mountain, but all the humans, all of us were created to last. We shouldn't eat up the, the, the trees, the animals, the water. We could live for much longer. We could live on in harmony for uh, ages. We have all we need to live on in uh, harmony. And we are going to listen to a lot of people who we respect the, everybody's sacred site. I add as a translator, a sacred site is a bit like acupuncture, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's something not only a cultural uh, meaning, it's all, all, almost like acupuncture on the human body. To take care of these sacred places is a condition to, to maintain life. As we say, when you... You take uh, blood from somebody, you take their ear, you take their eye, and they can die. This is what we are doing by extracting uh, petroleum and other uh, resources from the earth. And or if we, the, 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 uh, the coal for them in the land it represents the, the liver. It is what filtrates. And if it, you take this all the way from the earth, then you, uh, you are doing harm to the earth. Your little brothers, I don't know what you think, but if we think that we're going to disappear, where well, we're going to disappear. If you disappear, everybody will disappear. If we disappear because uh, we can't go on living there, uh, and not only the Kogas will disappear. There will be a very strong rain. There will be a very heavy summer. And then at some point, it will be dark. The sun will stop shining. But we as, uh, want to live on. I don't know what you uh, little brothers think. If you come to an end, we'll come to an end. What will the earth be for? Something is going to happen, and we want to go on living. I don't know what you think about it. Don't we? We all need to understand what we need to take care of the earth, to protect it. Young brothers, older brothers, animals, why couldn't we agree with the animals, with nature? So, this is it. I wanted to make it short. Do we want to live together? Thank you very much. The forum continues, of course, and this afternoon in the small 
in this small room and in the bigger room. We'll uh, uh, pause for lunch and we'll meet later on. Bye-bye.